Hi, I'm Patrick, uh, Waterscapes Australia, and we're here today at uh, one of my favourite projects. I mean, I have a lot of favourite projects, but some peak ones or some pinnacle ones which really sit with me really, really well. Um, so here today it's uh, Matt and Geraldine's on the Sunshine Coast, and it's a project we completed about a year ago, about 12 months old now, so it's been through a lot of stages since then, and uh, back to one year old and looking really good actually. I'm really, really happy with how this one's grown in and its progress. So we are the Divine family, um, Matt and myself, Geraldine, um, and our five beautiful children. So we were working with a space that had been used as a cattle yard that was quite devoid of life. Um, so we thought the best way um, to breathe life into it is to, to make a new heart, um, which means bring water. Um, so that ecosystem um, with the wetland, with the life, it just brought so much life to a, a space that had become quite devoid of life and has really become our living space. This project was a 13 or 14 day project, work day project, which is pretty normal for something this size. I mean, even smaller, they still take them out take about the same amount of time to do. There's a lot of detail in these. Uh, I think there was about uh, 70 tonne of stone went into this because there's a bit more involved in this one. There was some more retaining and the waterfall went up and as you start to go up and higher, higher level uh, with your terracing, you have to retain that with stone. The sand, I think there was about 12 cubic metres of sand in this one. Uh, I think it, on its own, it holds about probably around about uh, 40, 38 to 40,000 litres, I think it is, in, in volume, I'm presuming. So, uh, which is what we um, use for our ad additives, I suppose, our bacteria to scale that properly. Um, water usage, there's also a little bit of water usage in these. It's no different from a regular swimming pool. You do get loss, and sometimes you get a little bit more loss in winter when the water warms and you get some cold air and you'll get that water gassing off, which is actually the effect we love. It's like the, the, the steam and the, and the mist over a, over a lake or a pond. It's a beautiful thing. Some of my favourite parts of this water feature, well, there's a couple of things actually. What I really like at this moment, <laughs> coming to visit, is what the guys have done in the planting around it because they've done it very thoughtfully. They've made a mix of uh, natives and they're still growing in as well, but we have wistringias, um, convolvulus, uh, the yellow buttons, lots of natives. We haven't had the um, edulis, the Australis edulis, the midgen berry, things like that growing around there. But one thing I also like about it is Matt has a, um, a real passion for his Japanese sort of style and his bonsais. He's incorporated these some into the um, some of these into the, the landscape. And you know what? It just really actually makes it scale in a beautiful way, which I hadn't actually seen before in a lot of our features. So a couple of other elements I like in this one, which was part of the design process. This was. I suppose in design, initially it was a pretty simple pond, but then it was, I came to visit and had a look at the site and walked through it. And it takes sometimes a little bit of time just to get the right uh, positioning and, and, and structures and elements that really need to go into it to make it the thing that we will fulfill what the clients are really looking for. Sometimes they don't know, but you sort of get, get this by talking with them and talking through it, the elements to really make it. One thing I like about this is something we added sort of um, before we started was the beach system. I really love the beach on this one. It's a lovely little entryway. It gives a beautiful, subtle, but very calm way of just entering the water, just putting your feet in it rather than the stone edges. I mean, the stone edges are beautiful. You can sit in a rock and dangle your feet. With the sand, you can actually walk in and just put your toes there. So your toes are just in the water, move down to ankle deep, down to, you know, down to knee depth. And it just makes a really nice, calm entry into it so you can move into it without having to jump or, or launch yourself into a system like this. Also getting out is the same, you can just move up onto the sand and, and move out again calmly. So I love that effect on, on, on these systems with the beaches and how they open out and sort of invite, invite you to come into them. It's also great for birds um, and insects and things like that. It's a really nice edge element I suppose within a design. I uh, also like this one where it comes down to the deep area and then it moves and there's a little bit of an angle where it moves off to the side back into that higher ground. Um, we had to consider that in design. You want to think about design where the water comes from. It's got to feel like it's coming from kind of like intrinsically where it should come from, which is from a higher part of the landscape. Um, um, so to do that on this particular one, we had to bring in a bit of soil so we could sit the pond a bit further out from an edge that was already here, just build it out a bit further, and then it placed that very, very subtle waterfall system up through the garden there. And the other thing I really like about that particular water system is there were the rocks for one, there were rocks that have been here for a long time, they were friends of the family for many years, they were, um, you know, the kids have sat on the 
the, um, the guys that sat on them for many years. They, they know them well and the rocks know them very well, which is great, but there's, you can just see as you saw the rocks and the key with the waterfalls on this one was having that very subtle, no big crashing waterfalls. We're in a big sort of um, uh, forest here. So at night time, it'd be deadly quiet, beautifully so, you know. So you don't want massive crashing waterfalls. You just want something which will just sort of propel that um, effect and feeling that you have water flowing near you as you would maybe if you parked your house next to a, an existing creek or something like that. So that gentle sound of water, even more than that, if it was more than that, it'd be overpowering and probably become annoying. So something, part of the design process is getting that right as well. And I just really love the fact that we incorporated these stones that the family loves so much as well into that. Uh, and then the stones behind the waterfall to give those waterfall scale and then those additions of those plants which are like the bonsai plant to give also a scale to those stone which sort of makes it almost like a, a mountain sort of um, vista in a way but done in a, a minute scale. So there's some of the elements I really love about this one. It's also a really incredible tool um, from an educational point of view for our children, for our family, for our extended friends and community that we get to share it with, you know, because it is a living ecosystem and it's so complex in its beauty that people are always profoundly affected by its presence and they want to learn so much about it all. So to be able to be uh, giving people that opportunity to come and see and, and swim in it and just and play in it and look at the fish. It's just, uh, it's just been such a life-changing experience for us. There is a whole landscape, you know, where we would have a fire, a campfire by it every night. Mm. The kids will, will put a tent <laughs> to spend the night. They'll do their homework, they'll have their play. Um, there's sort of the whole environment it has really gone from that barren space to something so alive. And so I'd like to, you know, just present well the expectation of what your water feature will go through. Um, this one now is a year old and it's just reached its sort of initial uh, maturing point, I suppose. Um, there is a time, and I've spoken of string algae before, it's doing its job, it's doing what it needs to do. But there is that year of grow-in time. At the second part next year, we'll go through summer again, you'll have remarkably less sort of uh, instance of it as that ecology in the wetland and the rest of the pond becomes stronger and, um, and doesn't give the opportunity of the window for that algae to come in and third year you're out of it. You might get little instances of some string algae here and there, but you have to remember it is not a swimming pool, it is not a sterile environment. There will always be some life growing there and those little bits of algae around the place are doing their job and they're nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. If I think with the maintenance, um, we do use some additives. I like to use some beneficial bacteria and that's just really being that, because as the food uh, sources um, reduce in the pond, the bacteria also reduces. And so you might get an influx of nutrients through heavy rain or something, and therefore your bacteria populations aren't up to the, pop, up to the scale that they can deal with that quickly. I like to add a little bit of beneficial bacteria on a regular basis just to keep those beneficials uh, high in the, um, in the system so that any influx of uh, specific nutrients that drop in uh, can be dealt with really, really quickly rather than an algae having, uh, coming along and dealing with them. So that's something we do on a regular basis. Um, flippering is one of my favourite terms for a recreation pond. Um, you could do it for a small pond as well. I mean, a recreation pond doesn't be as deep as this. It could be one, one metre deep, it could be 600 deep. I mean, to recreate is, is a term that means so many different things. It's not just swimming, you know. So, but one of my um, uh, sort of recommendations for maintenance is flippering. It's an exercise and we try to mimic, I suppose, the influx of a nice, clean flush of water by stirring everything up, introducing oxygen to those deeper areas, moving any sedimented material or settled material up into the water body where it can be drawn through into the filter and to where the filter does what it's designed to do, which is allow any material that's in the water column to drop out where it can then be removed. And we're going to do that today, actually, later on. We're going to do a back flush of this system of the filter, which we recommend every 12 to 18 months, depending on the um, environmental conditions around it. In the first 18 or 12 months after a build is really, really good option.